Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the PB and Gains Podcast, and today's quote is by our good friend Harvey McKay, who we don't know. It is, time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. Once you've lost it, you can never get it back. Here we go. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, that beautiful singing voice you just heard was Mr. David Fennell doing the peanut butter and jelly time dance. It's an official part of our podcast. It's just unseen. Um, so there's that good news for you all. So uh, welcome to today's podcast. We are talking all about time. We're going to say the word a billion times already. Um, but we really want to kind of get into it and, and help you maximize your time, make your time spent more efficiently, and just really help you live a better life. Um, that quote we started out with was, was a pretty impressive um, few lines there, and it really kind of helps you get the visual aspect of how important things are in life when you know we're always using time as a form of currency. I mean, it's like, are we wasting it? Are we keeping it? Are we earning it? Um, are we wasting it, using it wisely? All those good things. So we want to make sure that you don't lose it and you're not able to get it back. We want to make sure that you have it in your pocket and it's the best spent time possible. So uh, there's our little intro on it. So I hope you guys enjoy the quote. Um, So that's, yeah, time. So yeah, that's time. Um, And we really want to make sure you spend it wisely with us. Oh, so yeah, (laughs) that's why. That's why we're doing 30-minute podcasts. That's my bad. 30-minute podcasts and really making sure that you um, have this in your car and you're not spending, listening to us when you could be hanging out with your wife, kids, uh, or actually working. So, yeah, there's that. So, we're going to introduce, it's me, Ben, uh, sitting here with David Fennell and James Mashney, and we're, we're crushing it today, and we're going to talk to you guys about making sure you have time on your side. And so, we're going to start with common complaints. We hear a ton of them all the time. So, um, we've been training and dealing with people in general, I'm sure you guys have too, so I'll put the floor open to starting with David. Like, what has been one of the biggest complaints you've heard from a client when it comes to time? Uh, most of my clients, they complain they just don't ever have enough of it, whether it's with uh, their kids, with work, uh, even with their priorities. They just really main complain is just I never seem to have enough of it. But a lot of times they seem like they're not spending it wisely, or what they're going, where they're going with their with their time. It's just mindless. Some of their mindless things that they're working on with. And on the flip side, with that, if we talk to some of our clients who've been indoctrined into our program with training and sleep and all this for quite a while, a few months, what have you. They're consistently training two to three times a week or more. If they go on vacation for a week or just miss a few days and they come back and they're like, wow, you know, I really, I can really feel a difference. If I miss a couple days, my energy levels are just dropped. They're not there. And they're buying into what we're talking about. So it's it's just the flip side of the coin. Instead of making excuses of oh I have you know I got to take the kids to school, I've got to cook food, I've got to go to the grocery store. If we can tie everything together, and you know if they can make it happen, you can make it happen. It's just how we can put our schedules together in an organized manner to have time for ourselves, so we can have energy for our family and our kids and doing the things we want to do. Yeah, nobody wants to beat themselves up having to work or having to do the little errands and and kind of those things that we look at it's like all right are are we wasting you know precious valuable commodity uh, or are we putting it into something useful is that parenting you know whatever it might be so um what our training style here we do 30 minutes i mean so that that opens up you know the the typical training is about an hour i mean you think of boot camps it's like 60 minutes of pump action you know it's like that kind of stuff we're trying to make sure that you get something valuable in those 30 minutes but when you leave here you have more time to do other things and that's cook better food or just sleep more i mean some of the things that we preach here so our 30 minute model we believe is really successful um and it helps mainly with time so there's that aspect of it all um and we want to make it to where you know you come in here and you you can do certain things so we just talked about workouts uh what are some big things you know it's like is it if i'm doing heavy squat day i got to warm up and then i got to stretch and i got to do all these other things like how can you maximize time through a workout or with your workouts I have a lot of my clients, what we'll do is we'll mix in some mobility drills, uh, whether it's dynamic stretching or actually foam rolling within the workout. So if you did something hard, what is, whether it was some medicine ball slams, some sprints, 
anything like that, and then during your active recovery, actually be doing foam rolling. Because most of my uh, clients, I can't get them to foam roll. They, they think that as a separate workout. So we'll, we'll include that with our workouts, get them to do some sort of stretching, hip mobility, anything else to kind of help utilize and maximize their time. Not only that, they can recover during that time. So they're not just sitting around during that, but they're getting ready for the next set so they can go all out, trying to get that heart rate back down so they can give it their all each and every time, but also not trying to trick everyone, trick anyone, but really find a way to include that recovery with the, the foam rolling. Uh, like David said, uh, my first step is just asking our client, you know, what were they up to? How was their weekend? How, how are they feeling? That's you know, were they hiking all weekend in the mountains? You know, hey, maybe they're a little bit more sore. Maybe we need to start off a little bit slower with some mobility stuff, with some flexibility, and ease them into things. Or, hey, they're listening, they're buying into the education portion of things, which we are heavy on, like Ben stated. And they do their foam rolling at the house before they come. They walk to the gym, and they're already warm, so we can just dive into things and be a little bit more efficient. And they're, they're getting it. They're, they, I want to maximize my investment here. And when I'm, I step in the door, I want to go, 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 and work. Yeah. And then there's those others who, you know, they're not buying into it, but they just want to, they're not sleeping, and they want to kill it, kill it, kill it, and burn the wick at both ends. And they're not seeing results because they're not balancing out that hard training they're doing with their sleeping, with their eating. So we just, that's why the education portion is so important and so vital to overall success. Yeah, they're not fully recovering. Yeah, and that's, that's big. I mean, it's, um, we, yeah, you see a lot of that. People, they roll out of bed, they slept all a good three, four hours, and they're like, all right, let's do something really kick-ass, and that just does not work. Um, you're, you're not really able to maximize what it is you're trying to do. And so I've heard it put best just this past week, and it was like, your body will not lie to you. If you are tired, you are tired. If you, you know, you have a bunch of energy and you feel really good, you can kill it. Like you, listen to your body; it's not going to lie to you. And uh, if you're super tight, you have an injury or your knee, you know, you got some joint issue, don't go out and just run around and, and do a bunch of things that you know is going to put you in a worse spot just because you think you have to. Uh, incorporate, you know, intelligence into your workouts. That's a good time saver. Be sure to tell your coach, too. Yeah, like, definitely. Feedback is huge. We run on your feedback. So we're not going to know your body the, the way you know your body. So we really rely. <laughs> I, know, I, know that's, I know that sounded very interesting. but Your body is a wonderland. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we'll get off that. That's bad. Um, so we... <laughs> Back Rig on, group. To, back Rig on, group. <laughs> we are focused. All right, so back on just like one of those things. Yeah, be yeah, communicate. Tell your coach and say, hey, guess what? This, you know, I didn't sleep very well. I don't need to go crazy today. Um, and if they're a good coach, they'll respect that, and then they'll put you through something that might be a little bit more moderate instead of hardcore, and you'll still get a ton of benefit, if not more. Um, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, don't feel like you have to walk out feeling like you're going to puke. Yeah, that's that's that machismo thing, and it's you don't really have a lot to gain. And now sometimes put put you know go max out, but most times it's not the smart thing to do. Um, so yeah, throw that regeneration and just use use smarts in your workouts, and that's a good time saver right there. So um, another one is like bringing you know working out with a buddy, cousin, family member, whomever. Um, that's a good social time for you guys. Like I. I get really off workouts. Like, all that kills me for like 15 to 20 minutes if I have a partner, but that's just me. For some other people, they do really, really well with it. I know it's an accountability thing for me. Um, I know you guys work out together as well as with your significant others. Tips yeah. on, the, on that one? Oh, uh, yeah. David and I, we both work out with our, you know, our other half, if you will. It's really, <laughs> it's really cute. It's cute. It's family time. Uh, they both have hectic schedules. They have clients of their own, or they're in the ER all night. So we just try to link up on our days off. Either, As a nurse. Either, <laughs> either David and I are working out together. Usually on Saturdays or Wednesdays, we'll bring the ladies along just so, you know, it's a good, it's just a good stress reliever. We're all together, and, uh, you know, we make it happen. And it, we keep each other accountable, like Ben said, and... It's good to have a little set schedule, you know, just so we know we're doing the next week or, or what have you. A little bit of a, a social time, but also we're getting our work out together, and it makes it definitely more enjoyable and help hold each other accountable, too. So it definitely serves multiple purposes, and that can help utilize your time and give you also something to look forward to as well, someone you get to meet with every once or twice a week, whatever it is. You get to look forward to seeing them there in the gym 
going through the same exercises with you. So, you know, misery loves company. Mm-hmm. That's true, yeah. it's And you don't have to post it on social media that you worked out if you have people there to prove it. I mean, so that, that's <laughs> always a helpful hint as well. Um, so I think, yeah, with the workouts is you know, throw that regeneration into your workouts. Be smart. Be educated. Be open in communication with your coach, trainer, um, even your friends. If you tell them, hey, guess what? I'm not feeling it today. This, you know, go do something else on the side, and then they can still go through their workout, uh, and you can cheer them on. Um, what's that cheerleader song? You can do that. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone loves that song. Um, so, yeah, from the workout standpoint, you know, throw those in there, and it will help you maximize your time and spend it wisely. And so we'll shift over to uh, the food aspect of it because I think the food is a thing that most people neglect for sake of time. And uh, James made a good point as we were kind of walking through some like the pre-production. Yeah, we do pre-production for this. Um, we're legit. Yeah, we're yeah we plan out on a whiteboard. Um, There's and, actually a producer here. Yeah, he's hiding somewhere. He's not here. Uh, he's off today. And so I think looking at it from the, the food standpoint, he mentioned you know Rachel Ray made it big doing 30 minute cooking shows like that was her big thing and cooking shows appeal to people um, mainly from a time standpoint because it's 30 minutes and then you can go move on to something else even now today you think like people who can record and fast forward through everything why are they doing that because they don't want to waste their time so um, making sure you have an efficient plan on your side is key so I think from meal planning I don't know if you guys do that at all I know you guys are the detail-oriented individuals of the group, so I'll let you guys throw out some good tips. We're getting there. Well, we definitely like to look at the, the week in advance and just kind of plan out, all right, what are we doing the, some of the nights where we have more time to actually prepare the meal, and we plan on making more than we can eat that night so we can eat it the following night. And that helps us, especially save us on the nights where I get home late and Nicole's just home alone with Jonathan and she doesn't have much time and she's busy hands full so she needs something either that's already made and she can just heat up or something that's very quick one pot simple meal some frozen veggies throw in some ground meat mm -hmm. uh, some curry powder whatever coconut milk and you have a good meal right there one pot less than 15 minutes and it's pretty darn tasty another thing we like to do is our time together at the end is we do the meal prep together so that's time where we get to talk about our days but we're just mixing that in with meal prep. And then we just have Jonathan sitting down in a little chair just watching us. So he, he's getting used to watching us prepare meals. So hopefully as soon as he can, he's old enough to stand up or help. Put him to work. Put to work. And <laughs> he's going to earn his, his keep and help us make dinner. So we'll see. I don't know. Probably some uh, butter knives he can use or, or whatever. But that, that's, how we, that's, right how we, the <laughs> that's how we utilize our, our time with the meal prep. So it's actually something we actually enjoy a lot. So... It's a nice little way to end the evening together. And uh, on the flip side, uh, I live with a couple buddies of mine. So if you're the younger bachelor or what have you, live with a few friends like I do, we'll take turns cooking. Uh, I'll, I cook one day for me and my buddies or my one of my roommates will cook for me. Or we'll just we'll cook together and take turns. One of us will be taking care of the protein and the meat that day. and Or myself will do the veggies, the sides potatoes, whatever side dish. Uh, generally, one of us will just purchase all their proteins for one week, and then the other, all the side stuff, the veggies and whatnot, and we'll just alternate weeks. That way we can keep each other accountable, we're, we're eating healthy, and we kind of know what the deal is already when we wake up in that morning that, hey, either Rumi's taking care of it or I'm taking care of it, just so it's easier. We don't have to think about it too much and waste time. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, and it's I think it's something that you guys just brought up. I, I've heard before, and I know like, it happened a lot when um, my daughter was born. I know it happened as well when David's son was born. It's like when people bring over food, I mean, they get, that helps immensely if people make meals for you, which brings up the idea that, um, like, food swap. So if you have good friends or you have neighbors who are maybe trying to make that transition to eating better with you, maybe you get a group of people or friends at work, however you want to do it, and say one night, you know, you take care of dinner. The next night, that ne like your friend takes care of dinner. And you guys bring leftovers for each other. It's not like you just eat it all and then go a night without food. But you guys swap um, food and you share. And that way you get to open yourself up to new recipes, um, different cooking styles. And then you, as a group, have accountability that kind of throws it in as well. And that saves you a night from cooking and cleaning. So that's, that's one thing. You might have to spend a little bit more money per meal. But in return, you're getting free meals uh, on the back end. So I think like a food swap with friends is a huge thing that can save you time. Do you have any neighbors, Ben? I have chickens. 
Uh, we eat their <laughs> eggs when they produce. I have a neighbor who's building a house. Um, and then our other people across the street bring us vegetables from time to time. So, yeah, I don't think y'all have that. So it's sorry. like a farmer's market down there. It's Manville. a farmer's, yeah, Manville Farmer's Market on my street. Epicurean Market. Yeah, it's like Venetia down there. Um, I'm living over there, essentially. Yeah, there's a lot for sale. Um, so, yeah, do that kind of stuff. I mean, save, save yourself some time and, and really do that and plan out your meals. And it might be, at first, a hassle, but then at least it lets you know what you're going to be preparing. And that's, it gives you something to look forward to. If every night you have to hurry home and say, guess what, I'm going to have whatever I can find, that sucks. Like, that's terrible. It's probably going to be something bad, too. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the times that we hear from people like, ah, oh, I sprung for pizza. I had to order it because that's all I could do, Chick-fil-A. Like, that's all I could do. No, it just took a little bit of preparation beforehand. Um, and you could have overcome that, and you could have removed that boundary from being healthy. And if you cook, cook in bulk, you're also cutting down on how many times you have to cook. Instead of thinking, yeah, true. Well, I have to cook five times or five dinners this night, if you cook two large ones in bulk, well, then really you only have to cook three more, or three total. That didn't make sense that's, at all. That's solid so, Aggie math. <laughs> solid math. <laughs> if you cook one large in bulk... And then you'll, you can eat it the next day. So that takes care of two days. Really, it cuts down on how many times you have to cook. If you look at it that way, instead of looking at I have to cook each meal individually, you can cut it down. And it's economically friendly. That's true. It's all about economics. Um, or you just got my mom. My mom has, like, three freezers. Oh, she's nice. She's got, like, all this. Like, she's prepped for the apocalypse doomsday apocalypse. Oh, yeah. So when, when zombie apocalypse hits, go hit her house up. Um, yeah, so plan, 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 and prep. Do some things the night before. Like if you know, um, crock potting is a huge one. You got Ooh. a crock pot, son. Too easy. You're ahead of the game. Um, and then I think too is like when you plan out your menus, it lets you know what you are going to have to buy when you go to the grocery store. So you're not wasting time in the grocery store. Like I like walking around H E B and Whole Foods. I get a kick out of it. But it's when I, you're a food guy, that's well, yeah. But it's just I like to people watch, and then just to I they put out samples sometimes. You know, you have to hit up some some pork and whole eat foods. Dinner tonight. Yeah, <laughs> just hit it up. But um, when you plan out your menus, you know what you have to buy at the grocery store, which cuts down on the excess stuff that you're buying, stuff that's probably not healthier, um, and it really just saves you that time on the back end. So that's really kind of what this whole thing's about. Um, so yeah, plan, prep, do your work, uh, and it'll help you out tremendously. Um, so yeah, we've hit up working out, we've hit up food. Um, anything left on the food aspect? I think we've pretty much covered it. I think we're good. Solid. All right. So, yeah, moving on to, like, wasting time. Like I said, like, we're all in this massive hurry to sit and do nothing. Well, for some people, like, I know um, my wife, who is a nurse, especially when she did ER, I'm sure you'll learn this, you're going to have to hit this point to where, like, say you or your spouse, whoever you're living with, they just want, like, dead time. Like, they want nothing to talk about. They want to just kill brain cells in a totally legal manner. And just sit and like just zombie out because the day is long. You need that. You need that time to mentally recover and come back. But um, that's not in extreme cases. For most of us, we do that during the day all the time. Uh, sitting on Facebook, uh, like call them like energy vampires, time wasters, like social media. Um, I kill a lot of time on social media, whether it's just stoplights, which is a terrible thing to admit to. That sounds safe. It's very safe. Don't drive around me. Um, <laughs> And that kind of stuff. Like, I know you two guys aren't huge into social media, and so that opens up some of your time, so explain some of the choices behind that. Uh, well, I'm six years or so sober on uh, the Facebook Do they give uh, chips bandwagon. Like, I should have a chip. <laughs> um, personally, you know, I it during college is kind of when Facebook uh, really hit big, and online, cl- online classes was my reason why I wanted to stay away, because I did not want to be distracted. Any excuse to open up a tab and, oh, let's see what the friends are up to. I just, I did not want any excuses, so I made the choice six years ago and have luckily stick, stuck with it. That way I'm not, I'm not distracted. I got, I made it through college somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Facebook, for not distracting me. <laughs> and I just feel like, you know, it's antisocial. You're really just, like, competing to see what, you, what you're doing, kind of one-up each other yeah. as far as friends. You know, if you want to talk to your friend, just give them a call. Text them. You know, we have plenty of other ways to get a hold of our buddy. You know, see them face-to-face versus yeah, check, through, through a computer screen. Tweet them. Tweet them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, there's other ways, and it's just, it's just wasting time. You know, maybe have a limit, you know, 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. 
mm-hmm. or just don't use it at all. You know, your kids are going to be looking at you, and they're going to fall right into that. They'll, God, you, that's huge, yeah. you don't want them to have bad, you know, bad trends and habits already. If they're watching you on your Facebook all day, they're going to go to class and get in trouble because they're on their freaking phone. So it's funny you say that because my daughter turns one this Thursday, and the way that she has caught on to, if you have a phone, how you use it, like she will grab my phone or my wife's and she'll start swiping, Woo. and like. I mean, she knows. Like, she knows what's going down. So, like, and she's almost one. So, I can't imagine, obviously, when you're six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and those kids have the same um, social media, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they're al- they're able to use it, actually. They're going to do that because they've seen you do that. You're a role model even though you don't really know it. Um, so, that's huge. I mean, that's kind of scary, actually. <laughs> Anything to add on that one? I'm good. I, I, I don't, I'm bad with social media, so I really can't comment too much on it. I think everyone finds out through my wife what's going on in my life. I think my family's actually happy that uh, my wife updates stuff on Facebook. Like, hey, I know what David's doing, <laughs> but I'm, I'm really bad about it, so I can't really comment on it. I just, I, I don't get on it very often. But on another note, if you did find this podcast through Facebook, disregard <laughs> everything we just said, <laughs> or, or Twitter, whatever it is. Keep going. It's good. Uh, just use it on a minimal basis. Once you find our podcast, get off of Facebook. Yeah. Um, it is more enjoyable to see people. I know, like, I used to be very antisocial. I just didn't like to deal with a lot of just craziness. Um, and so, kind of looking at it now, it's like, I would much rather go and hang out with somebody, talk to people, than to sit there and stare through a screen to see what they're up to every single day. It's, it's not the greatest thing in the world. Um, so, yeah, it's, when you come to wasting time, you know what you do. You know what TV shows you watch, whatever the average number of hours somebody watches TV a day record is now. That, for, yeah, record it. If you want to watch the Browns, fast forward it later, you know? You want to watch all the bad plays. It doesn't want... have to be the Browns. It doesn't. It, it should be. Uh, <laughs> Money man's out. Um, so, yeah, it's like you know, you know when you're wasting time because, like I said, you're in a hurry to do nothing, and then you complain that you don't have time later on. So it's like, I couldn't cook because I was busy. And then you're like, I also caught up on every Game of Thrones episode there was. So that kind of minimizes your excuse. Sorry, I'm not trying Updated to. Updated my fantasy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Fantasy football. Uh, well, we'll see what my team looks like, and then we'll see how much time I waste on it. Um, draft is coming up for ten dudes, one cup. Um, oh gosh! But if you could just if you could record your shows and save it for a designated day, championship <laughs> cup. What are you talking about? Maybe the weekend, maybe a Saturday, a Sunday. That way, you can get to sleep earlier. You can cook more. God, yeah, sleep. People. Just maximize that time. Theme of the day. Facebook will be there the next day when you're sitting in the bathroom or something. And you got time to kill. Use it wisely. Um, so that's big. So when it comes like when you waste time, minimize that and use it efficiently. Um, so we're going to talk about like the actual steps. Like how do you fix these things? Like what do you do? We hit on some of the things like put your recovery and regeneration into your workouts. Communicate properly with your coaches. Um, you know, work out with your friends, your uh, family members, spouses, whoever it is. Prep, shopping lists, all that good stuff. Um, meal plans are huge, and I think James has a pretty good. Uh, little analogy, metaphor, or whatever you want to call it, a baseball one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't always go for the home run, you That's know. You just try to just try to take a small step. Try to get the hit. If you take a few steps, you know, before too long, you're going to be running. You're going to hit your stride. Yeah. Mickey Mantle bunted a lot. People don't realize that. So, I mean, like, you, that, that's a good one. You didn't know that, <laughs> did you? He did. We've got a baseball history, everyone. I used to read a lot of Mickey Mantle books. No, he, uh, well known for his home run hitting power and all the good stuff, but if he was in a slump, he would bunt. Because he was super fast, he knew he'd get on, and it would kickstart something. So, kind of just like what James said, is like, don't go for the home run every time. It's not perfection, it's progress. So, make those little baby steps, hit them up, and I think those will lead, like, our football coach in high school is like, little things turn into big things. And I was like, whatever. But it really does. I think it pays off. Um, yeah, don't hit that home run. Try to make little gains. Little gains, yeah. So little gains turn into big biceps. Try to cook, in, uh, cook maybe mm-hmm. once, once a week. That's a start. It's yeah. a little, definitely one small step in the right direction then you know you can build on from there uh just figure out what you personally need to work on you know a lot of us focus on oh i gotta work out more i gotta work out more you know more more of the emphasis and more of the result results come from the food come from the sleep come from the recovery so if you could focus on that you know the workout stuff's going to be fun it's going to be easy you're going to feel better when you do work out so just take those steps and you know just be accountable to yourself and Really start cooking, really start sleeping, set a little alarm on your phone or your watch, start going to sleep a little bit earlier and see how you feel the next day. Yeah, this shouldn't be difficult stuff. We're trying to make it, we want it to be easy. 
and it, and it should be easy. That's why we want to keep it small, simple, little steps. Yeah, I think the thing is we like to overcomplicate things because that gives us an excuse of why we can't do it or uh, why we shouldn't do it. And so if it turns into this, like, I can't sleep because the kids have practice and then i got to do this and i got to cook dinner, it's like, well, if you take these little steps every day, all those like the meal like meal prepping, you will have healthy food to be able to take with you guys to ball games, whatever it is. You'll be ahead of the game instead of constantly chasing behind it. Um, so I think that like if I had to throw out, I think were those y'all's y'all's big gains for the day. That's big gains like our big idea, like the one fix, like the one action step you can take. I'm gonna throw mine out and say like be honest with yourself. Um, because you know how busy you really are. You know how much of it is just a bunch of BS. And so you know how your body feels. Like, you know better than anybody else out there. So be honest and real with yourself because that's really the best thing you can do for yourself and the people whose lives you impact every single day. Um, Because everybody wants, you want people to see the best version of you. And if you're busy, cranky, pissed off all the time, um, that's never good. So I think think we're pretty solid today. Any closing thoughts? We're good? Solid? I think you couldn't have said it any better. Awesome. So that was today's podcast, all about time. Maximize it um, and make it a little bit better for yourself. Um, The world is a nice place. So action steps we're going to leave you with. We have uh, the PB and Gains have a Twitter. We really hate it on social media, but it has its uses. Um, So it is at PB and Gains with a Z. That's our, our tweet deck. Um, and then also check us out at avenuefit.com. We have blogs. Uh, David just had one posted the other day about regeneration, recovery, inflammation. Um, so we have good information out there for you guys to, to tap into. We have YouTube videos, uh, coaching tips, mobility techniques, anything out there. Uh, it's all for you guys. So we want to have as much content available. Hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. We will catch up with you guys next time. Have a good day. Go chase some gains.